to discuss the difference between uh, what we're used to, our plain Euclidean geometry. I know we never used that term before, uh, but that's really what we've been doing. We've been dealing with a lot of things on planes before. Um, so that's what we call plain Euclidean geometry. And then we're going to talk about the difference between that and spherical geometry. And really the only thing is spherical geometry, you just got to think of you're taking your plane. So for example, kind of taking this plane and wrapping it around a ball. Like taking the plane and wrapping it around the ball. And that's how you have your spherical geometry. Okay. And one of the big things is, is to look at the lines. So like a line in plane geometry and Euclidean geometry, right? It goes on forever and ever and ever on the plane, right? Flat surface. In spherical geometry, it's kind of tricky. The only lines that exist are ones that make a great circle. So for example here, we have line M, which is a great circle. So it is a line on the sphere. So basically kind of like if I took this original plane right here, and I moved it around a little bit and then wrapped it around a ball, a line would make a great circle right there. So for example, if I had a line, or if I had something drawn on my circle that wrapped around like up top here and around, that would not be a line. Because if I unfolded that paper off the ball, right, if I took the paper off the ball and unfolded it and put it back into a plane like that, that red would kind of make a curve. It wouldn't be a line. It would make a curve to it. Whereas a great circle, like line M, for example, here, that's actually a line on the sphere because if I unwrap that paper, it would make a straight line. That's the difference. So this green one, that's actually a line in spherical, spherical geometry, where this red one is not a line. Okay, Kind of confusing, but um, if you kind of picture it, imagine how if you, you know, had a ball wrapped and unwrapped it, that that would be the plane of the sphere. So nothing goes through the sphere. Right? It's all on the surface of the sphere when we talk spherical geometry. So let's just describe some things. So first thing, we're going to name two lines containing point R. Let's go find point R, which happens to be right here. Here's point R. So I want two lines. Remember, the line has to be, all right, lines have to make a great circle in spherical geometry. Well, I see two here. I got a line that goes right here and back around, there's a great circle. Okay, because right, a great circle is like two poles, opposite ends. So basically AB, our poles are opposite ends. Uh, kind of goes right through the, make it cut the circle in half pretty much if I would slice it right there. So AD would be a line on the sphere, right? Because if I unwrap the sphere, it would be a straight line. And my other one would be, what well, looks like, here's opposite poles BC. And that also goes through R, right there. So BC or CB, however you want to name it, would be another line. Okay. Well, how about a segment containing point C? A segment. So now it doesn't have to go on forever, but if I still unwrapped it, it should still make you know a straight segment. So it's got to be part of a great circle. So here's point C. So I can't say like C to D. Uh, well, I don't know. I suppose I could. There could be a great circle, but let's look at something. Why well, are we already named that this is a great circle right here, right? So just a segment containing point C. For example, I could name like, well, from K to G here. Right? If I unwrapped my uh, plane that's wrapped around the ball for the sphere, like the sphere plane now, um, that would make a like a straight segment. If I unwrapped it and had a big plane, right, it would be from G to K, a segment just like that. Okay, so it's kind of confusing. Hopefully you're starting to see it a little bit. Remember, it's just everything on the plane. We're not talking about things that go through. So I couldn't say, when I say segment GK, I don't mean like straight through the sphere. That's not a segment. It has to be on the face of the sphere. Okay, we can't go through the sphere. And lastly, name a triangle. Well, basically just kind of three points that are on the face. So for example, um, C, D, and then over to K in the back. Right, if I unwrapped it, 
if I had wrapped the paper around my ball, it would make a triangle. So I could say triangle CKD or CDK, something like that. That would make a triangle. So there's probably some multiple things that you could have named down there. But those are the ones that I first saw. All right, it says determine whether the line H on the basketball shown is a line in spherical geometry. Well, we just talked about this. In order to be a line in spherical geometry, it has to make a great circle. So I just have to look. Would H make a great circle? Nope. Does not make a great circle, right? If I unwrapped, right, if I sliced the ball and unwrapped the, the wrapping around the ball, whatever leather or whatever this type of ball is, that H in the plane would kind of be curved, right? It wouldn't make a straight line. So I'd say no, and you could say that, well, we know that lines and sphere, spherical geometry are great circles, so we could say H is not a great circle. Or I could simply say um, it would really be a, a, like a curved line in plane geometry. All right, that's why it's not a line in spherical. So non-Euclidean geometry is, is when basically plane geometry fails. So geometry in which at least one of the postulates from Euclidean geometry, our plane geometry, fails. Okay, we had a bunch of different postulates from uh, plane geometry, right? Through any two points, there exists one line. Um, through any three points, or a plane is consisted of three points, all kinds of different things. Lines intersect at exactly one point. So I'm going to give a couple um, Euclidean properties or you, Euclidean postulates here in plane geometry. And we're going to decide whether they work in spherical geometry or if they don't and, and what it looks like in spherical geometry. So for example, it says, tell whether the following postulate or property of plane Euclidean geometry has a corresponding statement in spherical geometry. That's what we're talking about. If so, write the corresponding statement. If not, explain your reasoning. Okay, so... Right here, perpendicular lines intersect at one point. Okay, that's true for plane geometry, right? Perpendicular lines, if I drew perpendicular lines, they intersect at one point. Well, what about in spherical geometry? Is that true the same case in spherical geometry? Well, here we go. I have two lines, two lines that make a great circle, and it actually makes a perpendicular right here. Well, these two great circles intersect at how many points? They intersect at A and B. So, so this is, it's not the same. So we're going to say false. It's not the same. Perpendicular lines in spherical geometry intersect in two, at two points. Right, and it helps to actually picture your sphere. That's why I have that sphere over there to take a look. Um, so always go look at a sphere and kind of think about, well, if I had perpendicular lines, well, they have to be great circles. Well, there's really only two great circles I could draw that can make perpendicular lines. They obviously, I could, this one right here too as well. I got one going right here. That would make a perpendicular. Well, they intersect here and here. So they intersect at two points. So perpendicular lines in spherical geometry intersect at two points. That's the difference. What about this one? If two lines are parallel, they never intersect, right? In plane geometry, if I have two lines, they never intersect, okay? What about in spherical geometry? Okay, well, let's take a look at one of our lines. For example, AD is a line because it makes a great circle. Does it have another line that's parallel to it? Well... The only way I could really draw something that would be parallel is if it was like this. Oops. But that's not a line then, because it's not a great circle, right? So there really isn't any other line. The only line that's parallel is itself. So I can't really say anything about this. So, so I can't really state it false, because there, there really is no other line to compare it to. So it's kind of true. I'd have to say true, and because why? Well. The only other parallel line, they say the only parallel line would be itself. So there is no point of intersection.
Nope. So I'll just say no intersection. They never intersect. So even though it's a little bit different, it really is the same. Two parallel lines never intersect. Okay, because you can't have parallels that intersect in spherical as well. So one case, it was false. So we would say that this statement um, is non-Euclidean for spherical geometry, right? Because it's different, okay? Where the other one is not non-Euclidean. So there we go. So something kind of new. Uh, we don't really do a whole lot with it just besides look at some things and, you know, name some lines and things like that. So, so not too much with this.